Good morning, guys. It is Tuesday, February 7th, 2023. Kind of a crazy morning. Uh, had a tire blowout on my car. Um, this car is not equipped with a spare. It just doesn't come standard. So I had to figure out a way around it. Finally got it replaced, got to work, uh, and hit the ground running. So today's video is going to be really short and sweet. Um, I really liked the video I had the other day. I hope you guys enjoyed that one. I think uh, it was very informative, very deep. I'll try to do more videos like that. Uh, but let's just get to the big stories of the day and then we'll get to work. Um, so let's start with uh, the Fed. So the Fed is an interesting story. It's what I covered kind of in my previous video. Um, so Raphael Bostic, who is the president of the Atlanta Fed, has kind of come out and said, yeah, more rate hikes are coming in response to what we saw. So the job number that we saw, the 517,000 new jobs added in January was a very strong number. The Fed saw it. We all saw it. They're going to be making uh, judgments off of that and taking action. Given his rhetoric, it seems like they're going to be very aggressive with how they're going to raise fees uh, and raise rates, I'm sorry. Um, so I would think that if this continues, if we get another strong uh, jobs number in February, by March, we're probably going to be back to a half percentage uh, rate hike. I think it's unavoidable at this point. Uh, the Fed's primary goal is reduction of an increase of unemployment, reduction of jobs. Uh, whether that's right or wrong, that's what they're going to be doing. Um, I think it's a little bit unrealistic given the current market environment. Kind of what we talked about previously, a lot of this is just demographically driven. And uh, a lot of people are leaving the market, retiring, and there's just not a new generation of people to replace them. So because of that, I think unemployment is going to stay very, very low for a very long time. I don't think these hikes are going to be as effective as they think they are. Uh, at the same time, I think they might be partially necessary to stem inflation because obviously inflation is going to be a continued factor with uh, low population and high, high employment numbers. But how effective it's going to be at the root cause is a real question. Um, we'll see. Uh, I think this is the only tool the Fed has, so I, they have to play it. They have to play the card that they were dealt, but I don't think it's going to play uh, as well as they think it's going to. I don't think it's going to have the effect that they think it's going to. Um, so that's that. Uh, and Jerome Powell actually will be giving a speech later today. So uh, we'll see what he says, if he's signaling anything. This isn't a Fed speech. He's just speaking at an economic conference, but that's probably going to play into uh, his thinking and what he's planning to do. So um, that's with the federal government. Uh, let's, well, I guess the Fed's technically not federal government, but might as well be. Let's talk about uh, Google. So Google is launching a competitor to chat GPT. Uh, they are calling it Baird. I believe is how you're going to be saying it, which is an interesting uh, announcement. Uh, it was leaked as an internal memo, definitely on purpose, uh, that they are testing internally a new uh, AI system that they plan to launch. Today, in about an hour, Microsoft is planning a large announcement uh, in association with OpenAI, the company that makes ChatGPT. So they're going to be uh, announcing some sort of partnership. It's not a surprise. We've talked about in previous videos how Microsoft has invested billions into this venture. And they're probably going to be bringing it to Bing and a whole host of other Microsoft products. Um, I have a suspicion there's going to be a lot to do with Excel. If... if if it's a smart, if Microsoft was smart, they would incorporate a lot of open AI into Excel, right? A lot of people can automate their lives off of Excel. Excel runs very well with algorithms, with formulas. And I think that's a program that is just primed for AI systems. I think that's going to be huge for bookkeeping. I think it's going to be huge for uh, all sorts of programming because you can store so much data in Excel sheets and having an internal AI system that can process that data is going to be huge. So we'll see what the announcement is. I think search is like the least interesting thing in that announcement if it comes. And also, we don't know how advanced the software is on the back end with OpenAI in order to integrate with a lot of these programs, right? I'm just kind of throwing ideas out. But if it is progressed enough where it can be integrated into Microsoft Office, I think you're going to see a huge game changer in a lot of offices. That's going to be very interesting to see. We'll see what the announcement has in store. Uh, it's from just the chatter online and a few articles I've read, it seems like it's going to be geared more towards search, which is fine, right? This is an interesting thing because Google has been king for 20 plus years 
probably going on 25 almost at this point. Uh, they've been unchallenged. No one has been able to dethrone them. And for the first time in almost a quarter century comes a company that has the muscle to be able to dethrone Google. It's going to be very interesting to see what happens. Uh, I think the next couple of years are going to be very interesting in regards to uh, not just AI period, but how it shakes up the current establishment and the current markets. Uh, and this is also coming across layoffs at Google, uh, lower revenues at Google. So this is going to be interesting to see where this leads. Uh, now, a lot of people are going to say that this means that OpenAI is dead and that Google is going to dominate. I think it's the exact opposite. I don't think Google has a great track record of being able to knock down incoming competition. So Google famously tried to take on Facebook. That should have been an easy fight, right? Social networks, Facebook was not the first. It was at least the third. And there were other uh, competitors coming up at the time. So Google should have been able to take down Facebook fairly easily. They did not. Uh, if you all remember, it was Google Plus was their competitor for uh, Facebook. It was supposed to be Google's attempt at social media. It failed miserably. And nobody had it. Nobody used it. Nobody talked about it. Most people don't even remember it existed. Uh, they also had, of course, famously Google Glass. Uh, I would argue Google Chromebooks uh, are in that same field. They're still around. They're sold. People use them. But when they launched, they were aiming at Macs and PCs, trying to be a third leg for operating systems. Do they exist? Sure. But if you had to guess, if somebody pulled out a laptop, your first assumption would be Mac, PC, Linux-based, and then eventually you might arrive at a Chromebook. I just don't see them. I don't think anyone uses them. They're not a serious product. Um, and at the same time, They've had other products like VR products and a bunch of others that have failed. So to say that just because Google is launching AI means something uh, doesn't mean much. They could easily be outcompeted here, especially since OpenAI has a lot of intelligent people behind it. And they've been at this for since 2013. There's a lot going on underneath the hood that's a lot more than just a simple you know, deep learning program. There is a lot of operation that goes into this program. So I don't think you could just come out with something new and snazzy and pretend like you can compete. Uh, we'll see what comes of it. I could be completely wrong. It could be that in a year, nobody's even talking about jet, uh, chat GPT and everything's just on Google AI, but I just don't see it happening. I think it's more of a unlikely scenario than a likely scenario. That's uh, more or less it that uh, what I wanted to cover. Uh, the only other thing is another tech job, um, be another tech company cutting jobs, I should say. Dell is cutting about 6,600 jobs, uh, 6,600, uh, 6,650 uh, jobs to be specific. Sorry, I'm in a rush today. Uh, just another company that's kind of uh, cutting down in the tech field. Interestingly enough, with all this new stuff coming up in tech, uh, the industry is still suffering, but that's pretty much it. Uh, I got to get to work. I'm at least two hours behind schedule today. So, uh, wish you guys the best. Hope you guys have a great day. Uh, hope you set amazing goals. Hope you meet those goals. We'll discuss what was announced at today's Microsoft meeting tomorrow. And I hope you guys have an awesome day. Thanks. Bye-bye.